In today's video, I'll show you an easy way to create special anchors, save them to local storage, load them once you restart the application and also delete them. So let's jump into Unity. Alright, so here I have my Unity project open which has been set up with the latest Meta XR all-in-one SDK and it has also been set up with all the player settings. You can also download this project from the GitHub link in the description below. Or if you want to know how to set it up from scratch, feel free to check out this video over here. Now to set up our scene, we'll make use of the Meta's building block feature. And to get that, you can go inside Oculus, Tools, Building Blocks. This will open up the Building Blocks window, which you can dock anywhere on your screen. Once you have it, let's add the camera rig. Scroll down, add controller tracking and scroll once again till you find sample spatial anchor controller and add this to your scene as well. Now adding this to your scene will create these three game objects. Let's go through each one of them and understand its function. First we have the spatial anchor core with the spatial anchor core building box script. This script is responsible for creating, saving, loading and erasing spatial anchors. As you can see here, the script has unity events for when the anchors are created, when the anchors are loaded, when all the anchors are erased at once and for when individual anchor is erased. Then we have the spatial anchor core with these three script. The spatial anchor spawner script references to the spatial anchor core calls its function to spawn this particular prefab. So what's happening here is that the spatial anchor core will take this prefab, instantiate it, add the OVR spatial anchor component to it and then tries to initialize it. The initialization process is asynchronous and it will return if the task was successful or not. If the task was successful, the anchor will have a unique ID also called as UUID and its transform position in world space will be stored. When I say stored, I mean that it will be stored in a variable and not inside the local memory. So at this stage, if you exit the application, then all the anchors are going to get destroyed. So in order to save it in the local memory, we have the script called as spatial anchor local storage manager, which I will come to in a bit. Now, just to repeat myself, I said that the anchors transform values get stored and not the prefab itself. So basically today you can have a prefab of a painting at that anchor position and maybe tomorrow you can swap it over with some kind of a display. Now coming to the spatial anchor local storage manager, this listens to two of these spatial anchor force events. That is when the anchors are created and when the anchors are destroyed. So when the anchors are created, it will receive a callback from the anchor core along with the anchors UUID, which it will then save into the local storage. And it also has a function to get all the stored anchors. This takes us to the next script called spatial anchor loader, which has this function to load all the stored anchors. So when this function gets called, it's going to access the local storage manager, get all the stored anchors loaded. And along with that, it's going to load the prefabs as well. And finally, we have the controller button mapper script, which maps different functions like spawning the anchors, loading the anchors and erasing the anchors to different controller buttons like button one, which is nothing but the A button on your right controller, button two, which is the B button and the primary thumbstick. Now this depends on whether your left controller is detected or no, but it's going to be the thumbstick button press. Now, if you want to understand controller button mappings better, then feel free to check out this video over here. Now, the whole point of a spatial anchor is to fix the position and orientation of a virtual object in your physical environment. Make sure that it persists across various sessions until you choose to delete them or change its position or rotation. So to see the physical world, scroll all the way up till you find pass through and add it to your scene. And that's about it. Now you can save your scene. Connect your headset using link or air link. If you're not sure how that's done, then you can check out this video over here and press play. All right, now you can test the scene by creating anchors by pressing A button. So I'm going to place an anchor right in front of my camera, one on my monitor and one over my laptop here like this. And now you can exit the play mode and then press play once again. And this time you can press the B button to load the anchors. Now it's going to take a couple of seconds, but when it loads, you can see that they're in the exact same position. Now that we know the spatial anchor works, you can go ahead and replace the default prefab with any prefab of your choice. So this was just a sample to show you how to create, save and load spatial anchors. However, if you want to implement this and create something meaningful, then you'll have to understand the sample script and modify it or create a new one as per your requirements. 
I was able to do this easily by modifying the existing script to create this productivity app. Now, if you want to know how I did it, then make sure to let us know in the comments below. The more the comments, the more likely I'm going to make a video on this. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.